Hi everyone. I, I wanted to share today a really crazy thing that um, that that we've discovered about functional dependencies that sort of rocks the the world of GHC a little bit and, and makes me worried about the future. Uh, so 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 j follow along with me here. Okay. So it starts it starts from this ticket, um, which was, had, there's a link in the in the description below, um, and here um, Andre uh, Ribchak. I, I apologize if I've butchered your name. Um, came up with with something quite incredible, and so this has to do with has field and and record dot syntax. But that we're going to go quickly away from that. So let's not get get caught on that. What's interesting here is that there's a class has field. Oh, let me make this bigger for everyone. Um, so we have this class has field here, and in has field we have a functional dependency. So what that means, right, is that that these two parameters have to determine that one there. Um, if we just look at this instance head here for has field, we see that this it fixes f and it fixes x, but it doesn't really say anything about a. Um, and um, and then we we look at the in the instance context because functional dependencies allow something called the liberal coverage condition, which means that maybe this thing if if it's supposed to be determined by these, maybe it's not determined sort of right away in the instance head, but it's determined in in these extra constraints over here. Okay, so here a oh a has to be x arrow x, hmm. but that doesn't really help. X isn't determined either, so that doesn't solve our problem. And then we have has field f x a, but that's the same as this. So we're sort of setting up this recursive dictionary here, or this recursive instance, I should say, and, and somehow that's fixing this coverage condition thing. And GHG accepts it. Weird. Uh, so then after thinking about that, I tried to reduce it. And so several comments later, uh, scrolling down, scrolling down. Uh, where have I gone? Where, where is it? Ah, I simplified this into this. Uh, example here. So it turns out GHC allows you to declare uh, a functional dependency with nothing to the left of the arrow. It's quite strange. It's not very useful, I don't think, but, but GHC allows it. Um, and then I can make one of these loopy instances and then start to define instances uh, that, that, that really don't seem to, to obey the coverage condition, but I can cover it just by saying, by having a, 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 um, this cover constraint. And so that makes me wonder, well, if we have this cover constraint, if I could just write that, does that now mean that I can always get around my coverage condition? And if I can always get around my coverage condition, well, isn't it there for a good reason? If it, and, if, and, and if it is there for a good reason and I can get around it, then what, what trouble can I cause? So right away, I knew I couldn't do anything too bad because functional dependencies only affect type inference. So they're not going to affect the type safety of my running program. I'm not going to be able to change an int to a bool. But maybe I can cause other damage, and and so starting from with that starting point, um, let's let's explore. Oh, we don't we don't need to look at that. Um, what shall we explore? Let's explore. Um, here we're gonna have to make a, a fresh file. Let's explore what damage we can cause. Um, okay, so here we have we have this empty file. So um, I'm gonna want something like cover. So let's have class C, where I do that. Um, oh, I'm going to be able, I would need to be able to see my error messages here. OK, so we need some functional dependencies. Um, OK, so far, so good. Um, I'm going to need that instance. Um, oh, it doesn't like that because I need to be flexible. And that really is undecidable. So I will add that eagerly. OK, um, so we have this. But now, well, the problem, the, the kind of problem that we're going to get is something called non-confluence, which is the idea here is that as the constraint solver is working, as we're trying to figure out whether a program is accepted or not, we have to make decisions. And so sometimes we might be in a situation where we can make this decision going that way, or we can make another decision going that way. Confluence says that no matter which direction we take, we're going to end up back in the same place in the end. It's all going to come back together. Um, if we have non-confluence, it means that taking an early decision, maybe an arbitrary decision, is going to end up in a different place. And that's, and that's what I'm worried about. When, when I lose this, this coverage condition, I'm worried about non-confluence. So I think, OK, well, what, what, how, would that, how would that demonstrate itself? Well, if I have some function here that maybe has two different type variables. Let's say we have show A and show B. 
Um, and then, well, it may depend on exactly which one I show. So uh, if I want a problem with confluence, I'm going to have to have some other variable that might end up to be A or might end up to be B. So let's add a variable C here in the mix. And here, now let's show undefined of type C. Um, OK, so now, of course, I need a bunch more extensions. So the key thing here is I need scope type variables so that this C down here refers to this C up there. Um, oh, and now it tells me that my type is ambiguous. So let's allow ambiguous types. OK, so I've been able to define F. And now I want to call F uh, in some G. Oh, G isn't a function. I'll use it, something else. So let's say X here. Um, x, I'm going to call f, and well, I want, I don't want this this show here when I eventually call it. Uh, I don't want it to just error. So let's create some silly data types and show instances. So with these instances, I'll be able to see which one GHC is choosing, and then. So we're going to say that little a is really going to be capital A, and little b is going to be capital B. And let's see, space is limited. Um, OK, so let's try this. Oh, oh, parse error. That's because these are type applications. Um, and now I get an error, ambiguous type variable c0. So the problem is here, I've specified that a should be cap a, and b should be uh, cap b. But I haven't said what c should be, and there's just no way to know what C should be. So now I'm going to connect this back up to, to my, my uh, class C. Um, and so just I'm going to let me rename this back to cover so I don't have too many things named C because that's really confusing. Um, so here we have instance cover uh, or class cover. So that doesn't solve the problem. And down here, what I really want to say is that these are all the same. So GHC does a very clever thing in which if we have a functional dependency, um, as we do here for, for cover, and then we have other things with that same functional dependency, it's going to say, oh, well, these things have to be the same. So now it looks like I can say that actually this, this C here um, has to be either A or B, right? Because cover tells me that, that there's only essentially going to be one instance for cover. In other words, nothing determines the, the, the variable there. If you're confused on this point, it's going to become less confusing in just a moment, actually. Um, so when I do this, uh, it doesn't actually solve my problem. So let's, instead of cover, which is quite strange, let's use a more typical functional dependency situation. So here we're going to have this. Now I still want it to be kind of vacuous. So we're going to do, we're going to have this set up. So we're going to make this a more typical functional dependency. This is why it's a little less confusing than it was a moment ago. Um, and in this more typical functional dependency, oh, let me call this B, otherwise that's a little confusing. Uh, we're going to say that, that A determines B. Um, and so int, if, if the first argument is int, then the second has to be B. But it, it, I've, I'm sort of cheating here using this, this recursive instance. Um, and so accordingly, I have to do this. And now I would expect GHC maybe to be clever enough to figure this out. Um, uh, but it, it, oh, flexible contexts. OK, so let's add some flexible contexts. And let's see what we have here. Oh, it still doesn't work. So the problem here actually now is that as soon as GHC sees this, this cover int A, um, well, let's actually take a step back. So the, the, the interesting action is, is happening when we're trying to solve wanted. Um, so what's really happening here is um, is that we have a wanted for each one of these um, these constraints. So we have a wanted show A. We know it's capital A because I've specified capital A here. So this, these are wanted that happen when we're looking at X. And we're going to have a wanted show B. We're going to have a wanted show C0. So he, here, C0 is this unknown type variable. When I call f from x, we don't know what c should be. So it's just some unknown c0 that we're going to have to figure out. 
and we have wanted cover int A, wanted cover int B, and wanted cover int C0. So as GHC is processing these, first it sees this. Well, that's very easy to solve. We have an instance. Then it sees this. That's easy to solve. We have an instance. It sees this. Doesn't know what to do, so it just holds that off for later. It sees this. That's easy to solve. We have an instance. Um, and you might think, oh, well, this if this instance applies, then we have to solve that. But actually, that's really easy to solve because we've already solved. GHC is fine with this kind of recursion. Um, then down here, that's easily solved. And then we get here, and it turns out that too is easily solved. So none of this really causes any action to take place. So I want to change the scenario just a little bit and make it harder to solve. So I'm going to introduce a new class, isInt, with an instance that looks like this. Um, and so in this instance here, um, what I'm saying is, is that I can solve isInt for any variable as long as that variable is int. So I'm going to change these to lowercase i's and is int int and put that over here. Um, and now, oh, not in scope because I have my for all here. So let me put that in scope. Um, oh, I need some extra extensions. <gasps> and it gets accepted. So now what's going on? So what's going on here is these wanteds are still the same, but now I have a lowercase i. And because it's a type variable, we don't know a priori what it's going to be. Um, so we end up with these constraints. Now, when GHC gets to trying to solve this cover int 0a, it can't, right? The instance for cover is only at int, not this lowercase int 0 thing, which we don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, and so it doesn't solve this. It doesn't solve this. When it gets here, it can't solve this. But it does see that we have these lying around. And according to the functional dependency, because this cover um, uh, wanted, that starts with cover in 0, just like this one does, the functional dependency tells me that C0 must really be um, the same as this in the end. Um, but the problem is, it also has to be the same as this. And so what does GHC do? Well, in this case, it happens to choose this second one, B. In the end, this all works out fine, um, or this, the, this, the solver uh, uh, succeeds. We don't get any type errors because we end up with is int int 0. And then quickly, GHC will discover, oh, int 0 really needs to be int. And then it revisits all of these problems discovers it finds the instance for cover. At this point, C0 has been determined to be B, and then it can solve this, this constraint as well. Um, so, But here, the key thing is, is that we've chosen arbitrarily to use this one, this um, uh, other one, to simplify this one, and we get a result. I've run my program here. X is really now the string B. So is this really non-confluent? Yes, it is. If I just switch the order of these constraints, my program still compiles, and now x has value a. This is terrible, right? We don't want the order of constraints to matter. And as another wrinkle here, if I move this is int constraint, that's a really critical part of, of all of this. If I move this up, um, oh dear, I've gotten all my commas wrong. Um, if I move that up, and I recompile. Now my old error comes back because I've moved this up in the list, and then I get I learn what int zero is too soon, and then I go back to the way that I was erroring previously. So let's let's undo that change back to the really bad one. So this is pretty terrible. I have whoops wrong way. I have filed this as a bug. Um, uh, so this is bug one eight eight five one. I'll have a link below, um, and uh, I think some interesting conversation will will happen here so so anyway that's 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 the story so one one big question is is there a bug in the proof right we have there's this paper understanding functional dependencies via constraint handling rules that says that we don't have non-confluence so i i think probably I haven't looked in, in in depth yet i think probably this is assuming that we don't have silly non-terminating instances um, but that's something to explore another time thanks for watching